Any last words? It's morphin' time! You know, I think that's a pretty good depiction of how I feel about the, the world right now in 2020. If 2020 could ask me a question, it would probably go like that. So without further ado, let's get into this review. Gosh, if you are a Power Rangers fan, there's a lot to talk about. There's a lot to be excited about right now. There is a lot of content out there on the YouTube platform, comic book platform, video games. Like, there's a lot going on. It's crazy. So, uh, and one thing, let me just say this. I'm sorry I didn't get this video out on time. Usually, I review, like, you know, I release my reviews Fridays or Saturdays. And, you know, it's this Father's Day, you know, so I got to spend time with my wife and my baby. And we were out of town. We actually went to Guernsey, Wyoming. I don't know if any of you have ever been there or know what's out there in Guernsey, Wyoming. But, hey, your boy was out there spending time with the family. So now I'm back and I'm releasing this review. Had to do it. Had to get back to it. Um, so I'm excited to talk about it with you guys. But before I get into the comic itself, like I said, there's a lot to touch about. A lot to talk, you know, and, and converse about with you guys. I know there's going to be a lot of other YouTubers who are going to go more in depth on some of these other things. So with that, I'm not going to go as crazy. But Power Rangers Beast Morphers, let me just talk about that really quick. Um, we've all been seeing, you know, kind of the, the trailer and the teasing about the whole Dino team up. I watched it yesterday. I was actually sitting on the toilet and watching it, you know, right on my phone. So that was great. And <laughs> it was really good, man. Like. Holy shit, let me just say this. Austin St. John, if you ever watch this video for some apparent reason, um, I just have to say thank you for, you know, doing that. Um, it's th that episode and just seeing everyone kind of come back and the whole dino team up, it was kind of one of those things like, it was the little bit of light that we needed in a really dark time. And, and it, it just kind of brought you back to your childhood. It was just great seeing Austin come back as Jason Lee Scott and you know him morphing up and uh, just seeing him with the other Rangers and man it was just it was nostalgic it was great um, and it, it was way cooler than what I thought it was gonna be you know what I mean like they really did a great job with that episode so I'm not gonna go into full detail about all of that episode go watch it go go see it for yourself um, but Austin St. John Hasbro Nickelodeon thank you thank you thank you thank you we needed that it was much needed all the cast of Beast Morphers, you guys rock. Uh, Brent and Mia coming back, you know, for Dino Charge and a few other folks. Um, man, it was just a really good episode. So kudos to them. That was really cool. Um, aside from that, you know, you also have uh, Power Rangers Battle for the Grid. If you're a video gamer like myself, I play on the Switch. Uh, season 3 Pass will be coming out here pretty soon. It's been somebody that's bitching about, you know, not having that many characters. The game has grown over time, and we've gotten more content and more characters and more stuff to do within that game over time. So it's kind of that thing that just continues to build. Give it some time and you'll get more characters. And uh, without further ado, now let's jump into this comic book review. As usual, I review this these comics in three different criteria. The good, the bad, and the morphin. And today we are reviewing the last installment number four of Mighty Morphin Power Rangers and the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles crossover. You got Boom Studios and IDW coming together and making something magnificent. Yeah. You got both of these comic book, you know, franchises coming together, making something fantastic. And this is the conclusion for that comic book. Starting off with the good in this comic. Uh, one thing I like, it was, you know, it felt like, and I've probably said this before, it definitely had that feeling of a TV special, you know what I mean? Like, it felt like as I was reading it, I felt like I could, you know, watch this. Like, it felt like, you know, the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, if they were to cross over with the Power Rangers, you know, in an animated series, um, I was like, man, I could really, you know, see myself watching this. It felt like, you know, that type of quality. It was really good. Um, and not so story driven, you know what I mean? Like, there, there's a story, there, you know, there's things happening, but it wasn't so focused on that. You know, at least that's how I felt. And I'm not saying that that's a bad thing, but I personally just felt like, you know, it was like, hey, we're, you guys know what it is. It's Power Rangers. It's Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. You know, we're going to have fun. D damn it, we're going to have fun. Forget all this craziness. We're not going to get into a deep story. This is not Shattered Grid. We're just going to have fun. We're just going to show up and we're going to have fun. And I think that's what they did with this crossover. 
And I was okay with that. It didn't have to be this big, crazy, extravagant story. It was just like, you know, y'all know what it is, man. It's a crossover. Have fun with it. Enjoy seeing, you know, these two teams of superheroes come together. You know what I mean? And that's what it was about. And that's what I appreciated. It was like, yeah, you know, they they, they kind of knew their lane. They were like, you know, we're not going to go too crazy with the story, but we're going to really emphasize that eye candy. We're going to really emphasize the enjoyment of seeing, you know, these brands kind of cross over with each other. So I thought that was cool. They, they did a good job with that. Bebop and Rocksteady, you know, fighting the Turtles and the Rangers. Man, it's just, it's just dope. Then, like I said, the nostalgia factor is there. They have that on point. Getting into the bad of this comic. Honestly, I really don't have anything bad to say. I, I really don't. You know, and, and when, I, when I say I have a bad segment in these comics, it's not me being a negative Nancy or anything like that. It's literally like, you know, there is... There's nothing that has been done or written perfectly, you know, so I'll look at, you know, things from that lens like, okay, this is something that they could have changed. This is something that I feel like they could have done better from my perspective. But when I'm, you know, I'm looking at this like, you know, I've said before, you know, like uh, their whole reasoning, you know, Tommy's whole reasoning of joining the foot. I felt like that was always a weak point within this crossover. But other than that, man, I mean, nothing really bad to say. Like, I enjoyed it for what it is. Again, it was kind of one of those things we needed right now. This crossover, it was something fun. I didn't see it as like, you know, it's a distraction from everything else that's going on right now. It was just more so rewarding and something we've been waiting for for a while to get back to, especially for us comic book readers. It was like, man, I want to see how this concludes. And I think it was something that we all in the comic book and the fandom of both of these characters, you know, teams of characters, I think it was something that we all, it was just, a breath of fresh air, if that makes sense. It was something that we needed during this time, so nothing bad to say. I really do not have anything bad to say about this comic. I think they did a great job. Now getting into my last segment, which would be the Morphin. Seeing the Ranger Shredder using the Dragon Dagger and calling the Dragon Zord, I just thought that was beautiful scenery. It was just really cool. It was dope to see Shredder, you know, using the Dragon Dagger. Come on, man. That was dope. I want a toy. I want a toy, Hasbro, okay? Uh, the scenery where, you know, Tommy, the, the Green Ranger, gets his Green Ranger powers back again. <sighs> Jesus, man, how many times are you gonna lose your powers? The, you know, he should have a nickname, Mr. Lujo Powers. Like, every season, every comic book story, Tommy, god dang, man, you out here embarrassing me. Losing your powers all the time. Come on, man. We have the Ranger Turtles. We had Ninja Rangers. We had a Turtle Megazord, people. A Turtle Megazord. Hasbro, if you are listening, if you are listening, Hasbro, make it happen. Okay, that's all I gotta say. Make it happen. Uh, look, where's my wallet? Where's my wallet? I don't even got pockets right now. But if I have my wallet, my debit card, my cash, and it was available, mm, Hasbro. Make it happen, that's all I gotta say. Just think about how cool that would be to see these, some of these, you know, crossover events, you know, kind of falling over into the lightning collection of the Power Ranger toys. Like if you could get like a box set, you know, similar to what they did with, you know, they had the Batman and the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles toys, but they had it like released as a San Diego exclusive and you could get like uh, Donatello and, um, you know, Batgirl and Batman and Michelangelo, you know, they came in different box sets like that. Think about that for this crossover. I think that would be something cool to see, like a specific, you know, special edition release for the Lightning Collection. Maybe you're not releasing as much, but it makes it kind of special where it's like there's a limited series, you know, where you can get some of these toys. Man, I just think that would be cool. I personally would pay money for that. You know what I mean? Like, I think that would be cool, like to have the Mikey Ranger and Hasbro, Hasbro, bro, Hasbro, come on, bro, C come on, come on, y'all know, mm. they need to hire me, I'm a freaking genius, that's all I gotta say, but I'm saying, I think that would be tight. Another thing I always talk about within these comics, um, and I'm gonna mention it here, the artwork and the scenery is always on point. Uh, Ryan Parrott and Simone uh, DiMio, uh, man, you guys are just are fantastic, the story, the artwork is always on point. It just, you know, it just pops. You know, and for crossovers like this, you need writers, you need artists 
who know how to execute that well, where it feels like a special. It doesn't feel like your typical, you know, weekly, you know, releases. This felt special, you know what I mean? And that's something that I really appreciate and something that I notice. Um, also, another more phenomenal thing about this comic, the way it ended, it left off to a point where it leaves it open. So it doesn't really leave a closed door to you, but it leaves it open to where if they wanted to, they can pick back up on, you know, this story again at some point. The way it ends and the way it leaves off. I'm not going to spoil too much for you guys. You know, I want you to go and read the book for yourself. But the way it ends, the way it leaves off, it's like, oh, if they, if they wanted to, they could restart this again, you know, pick up where they left off at some point introducing other characters and certain things where you know you bring the rangers and the the teenage mutant turtles back together again for a specific purpose the way they ended it th that's all i'm saying and if you've read it you know what i'm talking about and now I'll get into my last segment of this comic which would be the lightning rating i give this book a solid five out of five lightning bolts it showed up it did its job it was fun it was the light in the dark times that we needed right now. And it was just a fun read. It knew it's lame, man. It it wasn't trying to be too serious. It wasn't trying to be too comedic. But it, it, it felt special. It ended special. And it was special. You know what I mean? Like, it just did what it was supposed to do. It was fun. And it was lighthearted. And it was just cool to see this crossover happen and see it concluded well. So, everyone at Boom Studios, Hasbro, man, thank you, thank you, thank you. Y'all are amazing. I can't wait to see more of this. Um, yeah, yeah, five out of five. If you like this video, here's a couple things I want you to do. Make sure you hit that like button, huh, huh? and subscribe to the channel if you are new to my channel, because I'm releasing video content all the time. Also, if you are on TikTok, and you'd like to see your brother dance, and you'd like to see me in more of my Power Ranger suits, because I do have plenty of them. I'm always on TikTok releasing content. But if you're not on TikTok, don't worry. Um, I release, you know, compilations of some of those videos and I will put them on the channel so you can check it out there as well. But if you are on TikTok, follow your boy and on Instagram, you know what I'm saying? Zentai Fit. <laughs> Other than that, y'all, that's pretty much it. Um, if, if you're a father, happy Father's Day to you. I uh, hope you guys are having a fantastic weekend. Um, stay safe and read some comic books. Subscribe to this channel if you're new. And uh, that's it, y'all. Much love. Uh, that's, that's all I got. That's all I got. Until next time, guys, it's morphin' time.